I'm Paige from Pagey Draw, and welcome to my video tutorial. So today we are going to be looking at some different tips on how to draw and where I get my inspiration. So we're first going to start with how I come up with my poses. And one method of getting poses is if you look at any of your older drawings that you don't like anymore, you can recycle the same ideas. This is one of the drawings that I've done uh, several years ago, actually. Yeah, I did this in 2009, and recently I recycled this idea, and I am still working on this. So, that's one way of getting poses, because if something's so old, you can just recycle it, and no one will really notice. Um, another way that you can come up with poses is if you print off pictures of people. So... Here's one picture that I found on the internet, and I can take these poses and I can recreate them. And another way of getting poses is if you look through any of your mangas, or if you look at anime, you can um, look at those. And last way of coming up with poses is if you actually just draw swiggly lines. And then you draw legs coming out of them, and like a head and, head and arms. So here's one piece, this is one sheet of paper in which I've done that. And that's just a way of practicing poses, which I will show you. So to create a pose, you have to start with the basics on drawing. So you have to make sure you have the skeleton, which is you start by drawing its head, and you move down and draw its neck, you draw its shoulders, branch off its body and arms, and you draw its legs, of course, and it's just a skeleton. It's like a stick person, but a little bit more detailed. So with all of these drawings, I've started with its head, and I moved downwards, uh, drew its body, branched off its arms, um, and I branched off its legs. And there's always a circle for where there's a joint, and there's just a line where it's just the bone. So there, so as for example, this would be a circle, line, line, a circle here, and just a circle for the hand with maybe some fingers sticking out. Okay, so when you start with drawing a pose, you again you start with the head, and you draw a neck, go for the shoulders. You go down, and hips, um, draw its legs, and feet, of course. And then, you draw its arms. Really unclean, you know, when it comes to poses sometimes. And then again, you can draw some fingers if it helpful to you. And then that's how I normally come up with um, with a body that I'm going to be drawing. And I often draw the head way too big, so I just kind of cut it down afterwards, so then it looks better. But a way of practicing different poses is um, you can just draw swiggly lines like this. And um, with that, you can then Normally I start with the head, but sometimes when I do this, I start with the shoulders. I don't know why. But you just come up with a pose based off of um, the swiggly. So, this way it kind of forces you to play around with it. And what's fun about anime is uh, they don't really have to follow um, <laughs> gravity. So, and then you come up with more fun poses this way. So I'm just going to do one more.
and the body doesn't have to take up the whole swiggly line, obviously, but it just kind of gives you a direction in which your character is going to be. And that's just a way of doing poses. Uh, I'm going to do a pose that everyone can do now, um, but just make sure uh, you practice doing different kinds of poses. Uh, even if it's really difficult and it doesn't turn out well, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. So, a pretty basic pose. Um, well, the easiest ones are pretty boring, but at the same time, they can still be really good poses. And they're easy to do in a good way of practicing drawing the skin on your characters. So then they're not just a like, skeleton. <laughs> So, the, this pose is easy because there's no legs behind another leg, or I find it's really difficult to draw arms upwards. So, so what we have here is we have all of the basic com components of a pose. So we have its head, we have its arms, its body, and its legs. And this is a good starting point for poses, but just remember anywhere that there's kind of like a a circle, you can kind of move it. So the head, I can um, make it face that way instead, right? The arms, I can move like this. I can just move direction of them. Um, I can just move the leg upwards. <laughs> this pose is, would be kind of silly, but um, you can just do so many things at this point. So just know that you can play around with it. It's, it doesn't have to be like this. Now right. we're going to focus on style. And I'm going to show you a few of my drawings um, so you can see what I have drawn. So I just have all of these kind of cotton candy and some of my original characters. And this style I have been developing over the entire time I have been drawing. And uh, how I've created my own style is I've taken styles of different artists that I look up to, and I kind of take what I like of their artwork and put it in mine. So I'm going to give some examples. Um, so Matsuri Haino is one of my, um, like I love her art style and I love her manga Vampire Night. And what I've taken from her style is I've, I decided I really like the way that she draws um, the lips on her characters and the eyes. So if you look at her style and then you look at mine, you can tell that there's kind of a similarity between them. And then, um, I really like the poses and the um, the way that Atsushi Suzumi draws bodies. Like, I think they're really interesting. So I've kind of mixed the two styles together to create my own. But I haven't just taken my inspirations from them. I've looked at many, many different artists, and with this, I've developed my own style. It's not important to develop your own style at the beginning. At first, you kind of want to learn the uh, fundamentals of drawing, and then after that, it's a good idea to move on and try to, you know, pick what you like from certain styles and put them together so you have your own distinct style. Another artist that I look up to for style is Camilla Derico, and this is one of her prints. By studying different artists, you're able to get a lot more inspirations for your drawings. You're able to play around with different styles that artists different artists have done, and you're able to, just overall, you learn a lot So now we're going art. to be looking at clothing, and how I come up with um, different clothing is, first of all, I look at my own closet, and I see what kind of clothes I have, and I may take some of the items from my wardrobe and put them onto characters, and like, not the exact same. I tend to alter them just a little bit, but they have the same basic concept. 
I also look around on the internet and I look up, you know, what's fashionable this year. And I also look at um, uh, Lolita fashion, which is a, um, a fashion in Japan that's really cutesy and um, there's many different subsections of it. One other way um, is also some art books. And this is one of them. This is just a bunch of pictures of um, gothic Lolita punk clothing. And it has pictures from different artists. And it's one way that I get interesting ideas, not only for poses, but a lot about clothes. Um, so there's just um, a bunch of different styles that you can look at. And it's really good for any ideas on clothing. And also, you don't necessarily have to get books with like manga, anime, you know, all that to come up with clothing. Um, it's helpful if you're drawing in that style. But um, another way of looking at clothing is getting fashion books. And they're not... This one doesn't just specifically like focus on this is fashionable and this is not. Um, what you're looking for is what, you know, how to focus on um, the clothing has stitches, how the fabric folds, and um, just the texture of all materials, which is really helpful when you're drawing so you're not just drawing the same old thing over and over again. So, so if you're new to Page You Draw, then um, I recommend you check out my application. I have included um, I have included many different poses within this, and I've included chibis, I have characters, faces, eyes, hands, and it'll help you out with some techniques on how to draw them, as well as um, it's a good way to come up. If you need help with clothing, I've given um, ways to color clothes and to draw them, as well as um, there's different poses that you can try out in my application, and anyone can do them. So whether you're a beginner or you're really good at art, you can look up, look to this for some ideas. So uh, for materials, when you're drawing, it doesn't really matter what materials you use. And all that matters is that you learn the techniques on how to use them. Um, Page you Draw specifically focuses on how to color with Copic markers, which I sell at my online store, shop.pagedraw.com. And we also sell pencil crayons. So. <laughs> so thanks so much for listening to the tips that I have given you. Hopefully they will be helping you when you're um, looking at my tutorials and when you're drawing. Hopefully you'll have a better understanding of what you are doing. So thank you for listening to and watching my online video. On a completely tutorial. unrelated note, I finally got my cotton candy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So good. So good. <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying.